up you guys it's Alexa and welcome back to the channel so today's video is actually part two of the dollar store anthropology video if you guys have not watched that I will put a link in the description box and also a link up here so what had happened was I made a shit ton of tutorials and I tried to fit them into one video and it was just like not happening so I had to split it into two and ironically the second half of these tutorials ended up being all gemstone related so that is why today's video is a anthropology gemstone theme keep in mind not everything is going to be a dollar only because there are a lot of things that you can't find at the dollar store like resin gold foil paint, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it is still a lot cheaper than what you'll find on the Anthropology website. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe so you guys don't miss any more videos like this. Don't forget to hit the little notification bell down below right next to the subscribe button. And I also have a serious question to ask you guys. So stick around to the end of the video to find out or I guess you guys can like skip all of these tutorials and jump right to the question. So yeah, let's get on to the tutorial. For this tutorial, you will need some paper. I'm using drawing paper because I had extra, but you guys can use computer paper. A frame from the dollar store, Mod Podge, which is optional, gold spray paint, some paint brushes, a pencil and Sharpie, and some acrylic paint. So basically what you want to do is take off the top frame and remove everything else and spray only the top with gold spray paint and put that aside to dry. Then take the glass from that frame and trace and cut a piece of paper to fit that frame. After that, you guys are basically going to make your beautiful painting. So I am totally not a painter or a drawer at all, so I'm kind of just making scribbles and trying to copy the photo on my phone as best as I can. I just pulled this photo off of Pinterest and I'm using that as a reference. And then after I made my little pencil marks, I'm going in with some acrylic water. So what I did was I just mixed a little bit of water with acrylic paint to make some watercolors. And I just put them in random spots because gemstones give off, you know, like random shades of color in the most randomest spots ever. So that is why I'm just going to put color wherever I feel like it. Then after it dried, I went in with a black Sharpie to outline the edges. That way it could kind of make it pop a little bit more and also in hopes to make it look a little bit better. Then you guys can go in with some Mod Podge but that step is optional. I just really like the finish that it gives off when you put a light coat on top. Once everything is done you guys can pop that back into the frame and you guys have your new painting. So I know these paintings on Anthropology go from like $50 to $200, which is probably because those people are actual painters and artists. But if you do not have that kind of money, you guys can be your own artist for like a dollar. For this tutorial, you guys will need some gold leaf paint, some quartz stones, a mini brush, and clear acrylic, but that is optional. So the only step I have for you guys is to literally paint your stone. I started off by making the straightest line as possible and then brushing up from there. You guys can pretty much find these quartz rocks like anywhere outside, but these two I got on a mining trip with my sister. Um, where the rule was you guys can keep whatever you find so I just ended up keeping a bunch of quartz rocks and instead of keeping them as you know naked white rocks I decided to add a little bit of gold paint and repurpose them into paperweights so you guys are going to let this dry for like 20 minutes and then from there the directions actually say to spray the gold areas with clear acrylic but I didn't want to spray my stones so I just skip that part so that's optional for you guys but yeah um these are not on the anthropology website but i did see them on target and they were going for like eight to ten dollars which come on like that is like too expensive for stones but besides the gold paint that i will probably use on like all my other diys these paper weights ended up costing close to nothing So 
just a heads up, there was like a million and ten things that went wrong in this tutorial. So I'm just letting you guys know now. For this tutorial, you will need a bowl of water, some dish soap, silicone, a silicone gun, a mixer that I ended up not using, a gemstone or whatever you want to mold with, glitter or anything you guys want to add into your gemstone, and resin. So what you want to do first is pour a little bit of dish soap into your water and mix that around to make like a soap water mixture. Then you are going to squeeze in your silicone just enough so that it is enough for your mold that you're going to make. Then you're going to add some soap onto your hand and mix the silicone in the water mixture until it becomes more of like a play-doh texture. So I actually got this tutorial off of another video and I wasn't really reading the directions properly and I guess you needed 100% silicone which I definitely did not do like I don't even know what kind of silicone I got but I know for a fact it wasn't 100% so I'm not sure if that's why my silicone wasn't really molding quick enough or it was just giving me a ton of problems like it was constantly sticking to my hand so I don't know if I didn't add enough soap but I definitely suggest adding a generous amount when you guys are needing it also this silicone mold was like super stinky like it smelled like acid and vinegar mixed together it was pretty unbearable so if anyone has had like experience working with these silicone molds let me know if it always smells like this but you know I'm pretty sure it's because I used like the wrong silicone Anywho, this is the finished texture that you kind of want to be working with. It's not as stringy or gooey. It's kind of like a play-doh texture. And once you get to this point, you guys can wrap your silicone around your object to make your mold. I left my crystal in the soapy water because I was a little afraid that it would start sticking to my crystal like it was with my hands. But yeah, once you guys wrap your silicone around your object, let it harden for two hours before removing your object. Okay, so once your silicone mold has hardened, you guys can remove your object and start prepping your resin. So just read the directions on your resin box, but I'm pretty sure they're all the same. So mine says to mix equal parts of both liquids and stir that until you see no more little swirls. So I thought it was going to be a grand idea to put this NYX silver holographic glitter into my resin. I wanted to be like a cool sparkly crystal um, and it actually looks really rad like in liquid form. Like look at it. It's so cool. But I'll show you guys how it looks afterwards. Um, it did not go as planned so I do not recommend that. So yeah once you're done mixing your resin go ahead and pour that into your mold and you are going to let it sit for a couple minutes. That way all the air bubbles can rise to the top. Try to pop as many air bubbles as you can because you do not want air bubbles in your resin crystal. And once you're done with that, you guys can let that dry for guess how long? 24 hours, a whole freaking day. Ugh. Yeah, working with resin, it takes a very long time because you have to cure it for such a long time. But yeah, you're going to let this sit for 24 hours and let this cure. So after a long 24 hours, you guys can finally remove your object from the mold. I don't know if you guys can tell in the video, but um, the edges of my resin crystal did not cure all the way. So I don't know if it was a bad reaction to the resin and the silicone sticking together, but the whole crystal was like ultra sticky. And I tried to rub it down with some rubbing alcohol to see if that would remove the residue, but it didn't. I think what happened was um, all the air bubbles ended up going to like all the outer edges of the crystal. So it wasn't really curing properly. So what I ended up doing was pulling out my Dremel tool and shaving down like three layers of the crystal. That way I can at least shave past the air bubbles or whatever was making it super sticky. And it seemed to work pretty well. It just left a really chalky residue on the outside. So to fix that, I finished it off with a coat of clear nail polish all around and that seemed to make it a little bit better. So yeah, these are the finished crystals. Um, as you guys can see, this is why I do not suggest 
the glitter because it just looks like a bunch of little air bubbles inside of my crystal which I do not like so that is why I would just prefer you know clear resin nothing inside of it here's the little one which looks a little bit better because I use little to no glitter at all in this crystal and these are not on the anthropology website but I decided to throw it in here because I know these crystals can run like super high and expensive especially for one that size these do not hold any healing properties or anything like that but they are still really pretty decorations For this tutorial, you will need mini crystals. You guys can use the previous tutorial and make a bunch of mini resin crystals, or you guys can do the easy route and get crystal beads. You will also need some wire, a mini candle, some E6000 glue, and wire cutters. First, what you wanna do is take your wire and wrap it around your candle. Don't make it too tight. You want a little bit of space in between because we're gonna be adding some glue in between the candle and the wire. So once you have your desired length, go ahead and cut that out. Straighten out your wire and start gluing on your crystals. So you wanna take some E6000 glue and add a little bit to the base of the crystal on the back side and then place that onto the wire. You guys also want to start about an inch and a half from the left side because that little part is gonna wrap around behind the other end. So for the crystals, I got mine in downtown LA. It was about $20 for a strand of 30 crystals, I believe. So it's not super cheap, but at the same time, it's not like crazy expensive. So if you guys want to invest, I definitely suggest it because you could do so much with these beads. Continue to add your crystals onto the wire and let this dry overnight. Once your glue is dried and everything is secured into place, go ahead and recurve your wire so that it fits into that candle shape. Once you have that desired shape, add a little bit of E6000 glue to the back of the crystal where the wire is so that everything is just like extra, extra secured. Go ahead and add more crystals onto any exposed wire and let this dry overnight. Once everything is dried, then your candle holder is finished. To make these planters, you will need a placemat. I got mine at Walmart for a dollar. Gold spray paint, a mini Sharpie, scissors, and a ruler. You will also need an X-Acto knife, but because I lost mine, I'm just going to use my box cutter. So first, you're gonna start off by making a triangle, and this is gonna be one of the sides for the front. I'm making my sides five inches long and connecting the two top points, but not really caring about the width of it. Then what you wanna do is add a half inch tab onto the left side. From there, go ahead and cut around the left and the top, leaving the right side still stuck onto the mat. Then you're gonna take your box cutter and score the line in between the tab and the left side of your triangle. So if you guys don't know what scoring is, it's basically a really light slit onto the material. That way it's easy to fold over because this material is really thick. Make sure you guys aren't going all the way through. It's just halfway and very, very light. So after you've made your score, go ahead and fold the right side over and trace the shape and cut this out. Once you have your shape cut out, go ahead and redraw the line onto the new side that represents the tab area. Score and fold over both tabs once you're finished. Next, you're gonna make a really long line, and this is going to be the length of your planter. So I don't think I even measured this part, I just made it like extremely long. Then you're going to make your sides, which will be five inches. You're going to make a line perpendicular crossing the length. This is going to be your width, so make sure each side is pretty even. From there, you can connect all four points and your shape will somewhat look like a kite. Then the part that won't have the actual planter base on it is going to be your top part and you want to make a small border. Mine was half an inch. This is going to be what the planter is going to hang off of. 
go ahead and cut out your shape and also the inside of the top area. Next you want to add some hot glue onto the tabs and glue this onto your planner base. Once everything is dry, go ahead and spray everything with gold paint. So the border on the anthropology planters are actually a lot thinner than the ones that I made. So make sure you use a quarter instead of a half inch like I did. Also the ones on anthropology are already sold out. So those planters were going for $18 per planter. Whereas this one you could make multiple planters and it only costs you a dollar for one mat. For this final tutorial, you will need that glass from the very first watercolor tutorial, a close-up photo of a gemstone, a glue gun, a sharpie, glass cutter, paintbrush, Mod Podge, and your resin. What I did not film is an X-Acto knife, gold leaf paint, and a mini brush. First, what you want to do is take your glass and place it over your photo, and then you're going to make like a just like a rough shape of a gemstone. It doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously gemstones are not perfectly round. So I'm kind of just loosely making just a random oval shape. Then you're gonna use your glass cutter to cut any excess glass. So what you wanna do is hold your glass cutter perpendicular and just drag the tool onto the glass. You should hear a ripping sound and that's how you know you're using it correctly. And then you're just gonna chip away at the excess glass that you do not want. So what I learned is that you should really work in small sections and not like a really long one like I'm trying to do right now. And who wants to see me break my glass in half in three, two, one. Yeah, so I already know what I was doing wrong. Um, I was trying to hammer it with the glass like held up. What you wanna do is have the majority of the glass like on the base and whatever you're trying to chip off have that hanging off of like a desk or a ledge or something like that so at this point i really was going to not do this tutorial because i thought like it just was not going to work out but i ended up still cutting it as if it was still one whole piece to see if maybe it would work out and it actually did so these are the three main pieces that came out of that whole cracked piece i'm just removing all the sharpie markings with rubbing alcohol so so just in case your guys' piece breaks, don't worry, like you guys can still use it and it'll still work out as if you didn't even crack it at all. If your piece did break, go ahead and add some duct tape or painter's tape just to hold everything in place temporarily. If you have tape on your glass, go ahead and flip it around so that the tape is on the bottom. Then you want to add a generous amount of Mod Podge onto the surface. So a tip on Mod Podge, I definitely suggest going all the way to the edge. I felt like the end result looked a lot better on the edges where I put a lot of Mod Podge whereas there's some areas where I didn't even put Mod Podge and you could totally tell at the very end. So ideally you would want to put the image face down but because I have a crack in my glass I didn't want the front where the gemstone is to show that crack even though I'm gonna put resin on both the top and the bottom you could still kind of see the crack at the very end so I'd rather have that on the bottom. Then you want to cut out any excess paper that's still surpasses the glass. Next you want to add glue all around the edge of your glass. You basically just want to dull out any really sharp points. Then from there go around again but this time you're going to go on top of the edge. This is going to create kind of like a wall or a barrier to stop the resin from overflowing over the edge. You're going to do the same thing to the bottom like you're doing to the top and depending on how thick you want your board to be, you could go over once or you guys can go over it twice. I actually went over twice to make the border pretty thick because I'm going to have the resin thick on the top but kind of slightly a little bit thinner on the bottom. Once you have your glue walls done, then you guys can add your resin. So again, just reading the directions, mix some resin and pour it onto the top. Your resin is gonna end up leveling out, but just to help it, you can get your board and tilt it in all different angles. That way it can reach all the way to the edge of the board. So let the top cure for 24 hours, then you're gonna repeat the same thing to the bottom and let that cure for another 24 hours. And then depending on how thick you want your board, just keep adding resin and letting that cure. 
So once everything is cured and dried, you guys can add your final border of glue. So what you're going to do is squeeze out some hot glue and smear it around the edge. That way it could give it that rocky effect. Also, you want to fill in any holes or any glass that is still showing. So to cover up your glue border, paint over it with some gold leaf paint and let this fully dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. So if you guys are using this as a cheese board, definitely add another layer of resin on top of what you just painted only because the resin is food safe and the gold leaf paint is not. But if you guys are using it just as the core or just something without food, then you guys can leave it as is without putting resin over it. So if you guys do add a layer of resin, let this cure for another 24 hours and then you are completely, completely finished. So the only thing with resin is that it ended up curing the gold paint to be more of a bronzy color. So here is the finished cheese plate. I am so happy with it. And here's the back side. So I don't know if you guys can really see the crack. It's kind of like unnoticeable at this point now, but yeah. So if you guys end up cracking your glass, don't fret. Like it still works for this tutorial. So the one on Anthropology runs for about $80. So I would say that with the resin used, for this tutorial, this cheese board would cost you about eight to nine dollars. Here's my cheese board with some really fancy cheese board food and oh my gosh, are those Cheetos? Those are definitely Cheetos. Those are my Cheetos. And here I am nonchalantly just, you know, eating my Cheetos off of my cheese board. <laughs> So much for watching all of my outros are literally the same so you guys know the drill if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up because i really do appreciate that if you guys want to connect with me on social media all my socials are at the Nava rose okay so for the serious question so i've been getting a lot of people requesting and asking me if i can open a online shop so i guess yeah that is the serious question if i do open up an online shop would you guys buy from there let me know in the comments below if you guys think yes you should open up one or a no don't do it it's like a waste of time and you should just keep making videos and that's it so I've already had a brand um, an online shop and like my own business so I already know like what it entails so I know that it does take a lot of time and that's why it's kind of like a serious question for me because if I'm going to do this I'm gonna dedicate some time into it I want to make it you know aesthetically pleasing I'm not gonna just put up a random eBay shop and just make it look all willy-nilly and stuff. I'm asking you guys because it is going to take away a little bit of time for me making videos. So I guess this online shop would be, you know, like where I can make extra DIYs and put them up on the shop so you guys could buy them. Or it can also be like materials. Maybe you guys don't have specific materials that are accessible in your location. Uh, maybe even fabrics. Like I'm always in downtown LA buying fabric so I could buy a little bit of extra and then I could put them up on the shop because that way you guys have already seen it in my tutorial. You guys know kind of how it feels, how it looks on camera. I mean, you guys could kind of tell like what the material is gonna be like from my tutorial. So yeah, the ideas are endless, I guess you can say. So yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm going with majority rules. So if everyone says yes, then I will go for it. If everyone says no, don't do it, then I won't do it. It. That's pretty much it. I love you guys also very much and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye. Also guys, my boyfriend went to like the Levi's booth at his work because it was like at a festival or something. And look! This is the Nova Rose. Yes, giving you guys those late 90 vibes. Ah! Oh my gosh! Oh, it's a dragonfly. Ah! It literally was like... Thank you.